I'm going back to a school um, sometime this month, uh, talking about my life as an actor, Some somebody who wants to be an actor, as well as me. I think someone's got a difficulty. What is it like for an actor who is perceived to have a disability? I am brilliant at learning lines. I practice with my dad. And then when I go to London, I have it all in my head and it all comes out. But there are a lot of scripts. If I practice every day and night before they film, and then they learn it all in the head afterwards if there's no mistakes. I do the odd um, with a drama session on the Zoom and I do Shakespeare 21 and Ed was the one on Zoom and I've also got a job. I normally work for charity shops, now I've been at Hodge Foundation and uh, I, I also work with Main Cup because I'm a celebrity ambassador for them as well. But um, because of the lockdown before the coronavirus started, I stopped going there and uh, now I'm going to be a full-time actor. I love doing. When I did a, a, another character on strike in the sequel, I worked with Tom Burke and um, I got lots of stick after that and uh, lots of people come up to me and said, you giving us one message. And I went, what is that? Because <laughs> um, they don't understand the acting industry and how it works. One of my things I do is I'm into psychology and neuroscience. I'm going back to do a master's. And what I'm really interested in is the adaptation that, that, we, um, that we get involved in as people who are not the norm, in inverted commas. You know what I mean? So for myself, as somebody who's dyslexic and dyspraxic, um, time management, you know, understanding scripts. And for me, I find scripts much easier than books because there's movement involved. Generally speaking, as somebody who's dyslexic, my short-term memory is not the best and I have to really work very hard at learning things. I wasn't as vocal about when I started off in the industry because what you don't want to happen is a negative bias, you know, where they might think, oh, she's dyslexic. So therefore she doesn't, um, she, she find it more difficult to manage scripts, for example, or learning large bodies of text. So it's certainly something I wouldn't have disclosed until I had a body of work. Sometimes the barrier is inside of yourself. So I will never know if I told people from the get-go that I'm dyslexic and dyspraxic if it would have helped me. Because they might have said, oh look, she's, she's a go-getter or whatever, it doesn't stop her. But certainly I have um, internalized biases surrounding, you know, perceptions and stuff. And so what I would do is I would try to negate any possibility of those affecting me negatively. But when I was at university, it was like, they used to say, yeah, when you leave university, you'll have to get like a runner, like be a runner. Yeah, that's what you do. Like, you start off as a runner. And I was like, yeah, but what about if you can't? So, no, I haven't worked for a company before. Um, I've had a couple of job interviews that never really went anywhere. Um, you, you never really know if it's because you're not right for the job or if it's because they don't want the added you know, pressure of having to have somebody with disability and making all these. But when they say diversity, I don't fully think it means everything. It means gender and race, but it, it doesn't necessarily mean disability, which is really frustrating. Because like, even like film festivals, I found that like uh, if I've entered into diversity festivals, that yeah, I, if I didn't get through, that I would put a line up and it was all about race, gender. But that isn't all diversity is. I'd like to see uh, more people behind the camera, behind the scenes, you know, in jobs like producers, directors, yeah, people with disabilities, um, and definitely more actors as well. Follow all the King's Falls, click and subscribe, and stay tuned for our next episode.